What's up guys, this is Matt with DIY Dad. Today I'm gonna to be building an outdoor sectional couch. So I'm gonna kind of walk y'all through the steps of how to do this. Um, so this entire channel is gonna be all kinds of different random tips of stuff that I do around the house. And also a lot of woodwork and stuff. I, I like building things. And uh, I like being outside with my old boy hanging out over there. All right, so we're gonna get into this, all right? this. Uh, this plan that I'm following today, usually I like to make my own plans, but my little boy over here, he is turning two next weekend, and the wife wants a better back patio. She wants an outdoor sectional. Well, if you look online, those things are thousand or more dollars. They're really expensive. So I went online and I found a cheap plan, which I'll post in the description from Anna White. Um, really easy to follow plan. Not hard at all, and it cost me about 250 bucks total in wood and uh, screws and whatnot. So we're gonna get into it right now. Um, to start out your shopping list, you're gonna need four two by four by 12s, four two by four by eights, and 11 two by four by 10s. Um, so this project has two different parts. It's got your regular two arm couch, and then it's also got a single arm couch, and then you just put them together and makes your sectional. So today I'm gonna to be building the two arm couch, um, and that uses all the two by four by 10 pieces of lumber. Um, it's recommended that you use a rot resistant wood, like a, uh, like a cypress or a, uh, a cypress or any kind of uh, board that's not going to rot outside or pressure treat it if you want to. I'm just going to use regular pine because it's cheaper and I plan on sealing it anyway. Fisher, come on man. He's pushing his toy around. I think it's better to, uh, I think it'll look, it'll look better anyway. It's cheaper. Put a nice stain on it, seal it up. Um, so anyway, with this first couch, uh, you're going to use the, like I said, the two by four by tens. You're going to cut them. I got them. I've already got the cart, the cut started here. You've got nine of them at 72 inches, two of them at 28 and a half inches. And then I'm still cutting on these. You're going to need 13 of these at 25 and a half inches. So let's finish cutting these up here at 25 and a half. Quick tip guys, uh, if you've never really worked with wood before, I'll kind of show you something about these lines that you draw here. So I measured out 25 and a half inches from that end over there. And this is the line I drew with my little square here. Okay, and whenever you go to cut this, if you cut exactly on that line, by an eighth of an inch or so, right, on that, you gotta take into effect the thickness of your saw. Right, and it's about an eighth of an inch or so. So, good rule of thumb if I'm measuring from this end over here, and right on that line is exactly 25 and a half inches, I want to make sure the edge of that blade is on the left side of this line. Sorry about the noise, he's just having a good time over there. Make sure that blade is on the left side of this line, and that would be this side of the blade right here. Make sure that's going to be on the left side of the line. You'll have it perfect 25 and a half inches. You want to look just like that. Lift yourself for you here. Yeah, you know, just barely on the outside of that line right there. That's what it should look like. I'm gonna have to turn on the video. I can't do this with one hand. So next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna build our frame. You're gonna need five of the 25 and a half inch boards and two of the 72 inch boards. I've gone ahead and I've attached the two end pieces. They go inside of the 72 inch board. Thank you, man. And it's easier if you go ahead and just connect all of these 25 inches to the board before you connect the other 72 inch. Um, from this board, you go over 17 and a half inches and put yourself another 25 and a half inch board. 
measuring from the south side board again, you go over 35 and a quarter inches to put the middle board. From the other side, you do the same thing, 17 and a half inches for one, 35 and a quarter for the other. Once you get those on, pop your other 72 incher on, measure, make sure those are in the right spot. Some of them might be warped, you might have to move them around and secure them. One other thing guys, always glue your joints. I've got glue inside of there, I'm going to glue every single joint that I screw. Whenever you screw, you glue, remember that. I'm going to go ahead and get this frame built and I'll get back. Another quick little tip guys, whenever you're uh, putting measuring your lines here for your little stud metal pieces, uh, it's really easy if you just go ahead and measure out that 17 and a half, that make you a little mark. Uh, I don't I have a pencil right now and I didn't feel like looking like one. I, I always just use a screw. Just rub me a little line so I know my board is going to go on the inside of that line. So I measured again for my 34, I'm sorry, 35 and a quarter right here. And then I measured from that side, yeah. my 17 and a half and 34 and a quarter. And if you look, that's going to be the perfect size we need for a two by four right here in the middle. So we know our measurements are right. Also, guys, forgot to mention the screws I'm using. I'm just going to use some number nine three-inch deck screws here. Um, you can go super nice with it and pocket hole drill it if you want to, but I just didn't feel like doing all that. So we're just going to use deck screws here, and it's going to work just fine. And there it is. That's our frame. I'm going to put, the, uh, I'm gonna put this 72-incher uh, on here. I just screwed it into the two end boards. And then I, before I screwed it on there, I put glue on each one of the ends. So I just laid it on top, screwed in the two end boards, and then I measured my marks over here just to make sure I was even as if, uh, like the other side, and then just screwed those in. Very easy. And one angry baby. Next thing you do, you're going to put these arms together. You need two of them, obviously. It's a two arm couch. Very simple. You just take two of your 25 and a half inch boards it will be your legs and then the arm itself is one of the 28 and a half inch boards you're going to make two of those i've already got them put together and we're about to move on to the next step next thing we're going to do we're going to put a little brace on the inside of the arm leg assembly here you're going to measure 14 inches from the bottom of the leg to the top of this board so that's 14 inches right there I just marked me two little notches and I lined it up. And, uh, you know, looking back on it, it probably would have been easier to put that on first and then put that top piece on. So, teach is on. It doesn't really matter whichever way you want to do it. Uh, it's just easier to since you're gluing it. You know, smear the glue all over the sides, trying to shove it down in there like I did. But nothing a simple paper towel can fix. We got the yellow one now. Also, I don't know if I mentioned in the uh, last clip. But uh, the brace board is one of your 25 and a half boards. And it should fit perfectly inside. Just like that. All right, so after you get those braces on, next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna attach this 25 and a half inch board right snug underneath the brace you just put it up on the edges um, it's gonna be a tight fit uh, I, I used a, I had to use a hammer to get it good in there and where I want it um, put two screws in there make sure it's good and glued this is gonna be structurally important as this is where your frame is gonna screw into so I'm gonna make sure that's good and strong go ahead and get that other one done real quick we're gonna put the frame on the arms all right next we're gonna start attaching the frame to the legs best way to do this, especially if you're by yourself, is just to lay it on the side and match up the two ends. Now, you never know, these might be off just a little bit, and if they are, your table is going to rock. So what I'm going to do, and what I recommend you do, is measuring from here to here, and make sure you have that same leg distance on the other side. If you don't do that, it's either going to rock or it's going to be all, it's going to look cockeyed, it just ain't going to look good. So I use three inch screws here. Be careful not to drive them in all the way because they will poke out just a little bit. And they are, but you're not going to be able to see it and it's not enough. Like I'm rubbing my finger on the back of one right now and it's not even cutting me. You, know? you can't really see it. 
so it should be all right. Just make sure you don't drive them in all the way. Glue it real well, and uh, I tend to go overboard with screws. I just like to make sure that everything's secure. I'll go ahead and get the other side over there, and we're almost done here. A lot of it done. Getting there. Just got to get the back on it and the slats for the seats. As you can see, it is stable. It's not rocking at all. Whenever, uh, whenever you are picking out your lumber, make sure you pick out the flattest pieces you can find. That will make it a lot easier. Uh, if you've got a planer and a joiner, then you know, grab whatever lumber you want, and then you can plane it and join it and get it all flat. But I don't have all those tools. I'm limited, so I'll just pick out the best lumber I can find. It takes a little while, but it wor it's worth it whenever you put everything together and you don't have a wobble or a twist or anything. And now... We are going to get the back on there and then the slats. Be right back with you. All right, so I finished this the other night. Um, and my phone died, so I didn't really get to finish the video, but I was just about done with it anyway. And all I had to do was put these seat slats on and then put the back on. Uh, with these seat slats, I use some scrap 2x4 and spacing on either side. And it yeah, works out. Hi. My daughter's helping today. And an old boy, he's running around. Um, so yeah, the two by four spacing works. Uh, the, the last board here is not gonna be quite the same thickness, but it's not a big deal because we're gonna be putting cushions on this thing anyway. You know so. what, guys? The, the day is not that windy, but it's a little bit cold outside. That's why we're wearing jackets. Yes, that's why we're wearing jackets. All right, so this one's done. Um, 72 inch backboard there. I'm probably gonna add another one on the bottom to kind of keep the pillow from sliding out. Well, we can make and, a bunk uh, couch. Yeah. So this one is done, and now we're gonna make the one arm sofa that sits right next to this one to make it a section. So we gotta get started. I'm cutting hey, some wood. All right, so for the one arm section, well, you're gonna use the the four two by four by twelves, and then the four two by four by eights. The uh, two by four by twelves, you're gonna cut the you're gonna cut three seventy and a half inch boards out of those. You can get two of those at each board, and then you will need a seventy and three quarter for the back support that we're also gonna cut out one of these long boards. So let's start cutting. All right, so after you finish cutting, you ought to have three two by fours at 72 and a half inches, one two by four at 72 and three quarter, and then 10 two by fours How at 25 and a half. Off the ground. And one two by four at 12 and a half. Uh, you also need six two by fours at 72 inches even. Of course, these children of mine distracted sure. me and I cut one too many of those boards and it threw me off. So I gotta run to the store and get some more two by fours. Um, kinda hate ending up with waste, but it is what it is. So just pay attention when you're cutting. Next, you're gonna put your seat frame together. Huh? You're gonna use four of the 25 and a half inch boards and two of the 70 and a half inch boards. Just like we did with the last one. <laughs> we are going to glue and screw. They're spaced out. This hey edge guys, to the front of this board is seven. Uh, I'm sorry, 22 inches. Same yeah, on that look side. at my chair. That's her chair. They're being so helpful today. Throwing pretzels everywhere, distracting me. But hey, we're still getting the job done, right, Millie? Yes. One thing I forgot to mention is. For some no. reason, the cut list left off this 28 and a half inch arm rest. So, hey guys. need to cut that out. Um, so, after we put the arm together, we, we put the arm together just like we did before. We put our piece right here. Was it 14 inches up? It just got built. Glued this right underneath it, glued and screwed it, and it the frame it, connects to it. Uh, now, Not that big reason. On it just got built. Putting the legs on this side so it's yeah. a 12 and a half inch leg measure your legs over there mine was like an eighth off so i just took an eighth off of this one so it should sit flat connect yeah to the i'm to stick to that bro all right so i got the legs on again 
Uh, measure the legs yourself. Once, once you put this arm on, measure from the bottom of the frame to the floor on either side. Make sure that it's the same as you're putting it on. Then once you got it the same, make sure it's going to be the same over here. Mine were it's just a tad off, so I just had to adjust them as I saw fit. Mine are about nine inches from um, from the bottom of this board to the to the ground. Um, so. That backboard there is one of your 25 and a half inch boards. Uh, again, like I said, measure it to the, to the length you need, just if necessary. Next, we're gonna put this uh, back piece on. So it, it just sits on just like that and then connects to the other side. I would use uh, pocket holes, which is also something I forgot to mention about this one. I drill pocket holes on that back bench there on the uh, backrest. I'm about to do the same on that one side and I'll show you all my pocket hole jig and how I do that. Mm. All right, so this is my pocket hole jig setup. This is a really helpful tool to have if you don't have one. It's very inexpensive. This is called the Craig jig. You can buy this for uh, 20, 30 bucks at Home Depot. Uh, Trying to talk, Millie. Uh, you gotta buy the screws to go with it. Or you will, I mean, you can buy all frame pocket screws if you want to, but I just buy the ones you need. Or the Craig. Craig makes their own softwood plywood. For uh, two by fours, you're always going to use the two and a half inchers, um, unless of course you're, you know, putting a uh, one by on there. So the, the instructions is yeah. explained a lot better than I will. Um, basically, you set this for the thickness of your board, and it comes with a little measuring tool that is in my box. I, but I know the thickness of this two by four is going to have it set on the two and a half inch setting. If I do, I've never used a smaller one. If I'm using one buys, then it'll be on the half inch. As you can see, mine's taped up. It's been used a lot. I need to get a new one. Anyway, so it really just works. Uh, you get the special bit that comes with it. You also set this uh, little throat on there for half at one and a half inch. And it, it just slides in and start drilling before before it hits the wood and starts the hole. And boom, you got two pocket holes. And uh, it also comes with a long pocket hole screw what driller hole. bit. And, uh, and that's it. That's not to it. I, I use this thing all the time. If you want, you can buy a $30 clamp that goes with it. This is just a little $3 clamp from Harbor Freight and it works just as fine. In fact, I think it works better. So definitely recommend getting the Craig Jig. I'll put the link in the description for it. They've actually just come out with a better one like 150 bucks but i will be getting it soon because it's it's worth it for sure all right i'm gonna go ahead and drill these holes Are you about to that's do all it? there is to it guy nice pocket holes pocket. screws will go right inside of there and neck flat up against the board you're trying to drill it too very simple all right so after we put the pocket holes on went ahead and Finish putting that backing on and then you just put the seat slats down. Again, just like the other one, I spaced it out with a two by four. And uh, I, I feel like I went a little overboard with the screws on this one, two in each. I mean, they're, they're not moving, so I just put, I put one in each of these. That's not gonna come out. I didn't, even, I didn't even glue them. I'm not worried about them as much. But uh, everything came out perfectly. I think the one thing I'm gonna change is this board here. I'm gonna flip it up to match this one over here. That's the only thing that I see. Everything else came out perfect with this thing. It looks great. All I have to do now is go and find some pillows. Um, if you build directly to these dimensions that I did here, it's gonna be about a 24 inch pillow and you're gonna need, let's see, three, four, five, six. You're gonna need six pillows. Uh, if you, you know, build it to your size, you're just gonna have to measure and uh, figure out what you need. Uh, back pillows, we don't have those yet, I said, but uh, depending on how deep yours are, ours are about five inches deep. So we need about a 10 inch or so tall pillow. So we might have to find those online somewhere. But anyway, that's it. Uh, I don't have this connected right here. You can move it any way you want. You know, if you'd rather it be more connected to each other and you can obviously screw them together but i think it's fine just how it is so anyway that's it uh hope this was helpful i know my video making skills aren't the greatest i'm 
kind of new at this and I'm just using my phone. But uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. Very easy build and it's going to look great. I'm going to stain it and I'm going to varnish it and I will put a final video up when I have it set up on my patio. And this is it guys. I actually finished it a few days ago and uh, just haven't had time to come out here and show you the finished product. As you can tell, pollen is falling in our area. It's already pretty dirty, but it's holding up good. Um, I put a stain on it with a uh, clear coat of polyurethane and it looks really good out here. Um, one thing that I'm going to say is that you need to add a uh, two by four right here for back support because these, these pillows just like to slip out from back there whenever you lean on it. Kind of a design flaw in my opinion, but easily fixed. I've got the two by fours to do it. I just need to do it. Other than that, very, very simple. Only $250 in material. Um, the pillows are quite expensive. That's what I did not realize how expensive pillows were. They cost us close to 400 bucks probably. I mean, they ain't cheap, and they're really not that comfortable either. And they're all pretty much kind of the same feeling in them. We got these at Lowe's. So, again, you know, you can uh, you could build yours to whatever specification pillows you want. If you don't want this many pillows, then knock it down a few feet. Um, other than that, this is it. So, hopefully, my video was somewhat helpful. Uh, that was the first one I've made building something. Um, so, I gotta practice and get better at it. I, get, I know for sure. Um, Anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Catch y'all next time.